Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, Austin B. Austin B. Media. Uh, my name's Austin, uh, but if you're watching or listening, you already know that. Um, I am here today with Emmanuel Tenenbaum, the director of Free Fall. It's a short film about a stock trader in the midst of 9/11. Um, Emmanuel, hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, actually. Um, as I'm recording this. Um, I just got press accreditation for the Austin Film Festival. Um, wow. Pun not intended. Um, yeah, but, Austin goes to Austin. Yeah, uh, virtually. But, um, but yeah, it, 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 it's a good day when you get um, film news. And just last night, I heard from AFI um, about AFI Fest, so confirming yes. final details about that. So that's, it's been a pretty great day. And of course, it's a great day because I, I love talking to filmmakers like yourself um, because I was telling um, one of my friends this. I think I like interviewing a lot more than writing um, mm. because I think when I write reviews, um, I tend to get lost in... I, the art tends to get lost. Um, for example... Um, Last night, I was writing a review for a film called The Cleaner, which is being distributed by uh, 1091 Pictures. Uh, it's a, it's a um, man, it, it, uh, he's a cleaner, um, he cleans homes, and he's tasked with Lin by Linda Carter, you know, Wonder Woman, um, to track down her estranged son. And it was, I just kind of had to write this email to them, and I was like, hey, Look, this is negative, but that is not. Um, there are good things here, so yeah. Um, it, I, I always feel like that gets lost when you're forced to distill uh, what may be like a two-hour, ninety-minute movie into this seven hundred-word article. Mm -hmm. So I, I like talking um, to filmmakers such as yourself because I think it gives people much more insight into how movies are made or in this case short films. Um, but let's uh, talk about free fall a little bit. Um, so this is a film this is a very unique film um, or short film rather. Um, this is about a stock trader who give a little bit away, um, bets against the market in a very turbulent time, I should say. Um, and we, we've had a few stories like this, you know, Big Shore, um, Wolf of Wall Street. Well, I, I can't say Wolf of Wall Street. I haven't really seen too much of that. Um, but so wh where did you find this story? Um, the story originally, uh, we find it in a, in a book by a Dutch writer. He's called Joris Leendijk. And he's, a, he's an absolutely brilliant uh, writer. And he was, in, uh, he was living in London and he was uh, doing a blog for The Guardian. And he was interviewing uh, bankers, a lot and a lot and a lot of bankers. Of course, he would never give away their names. It, ha it was all anonymous. And uh, he collected absolutely crazy stories about the world of finance, about the 2008 crisis, about how the world is being run by, by those people who sometimes have no idea what they're doing themselves. Uh, so a lot of really good stories. And there was one particular story that caught our attention of this trader, uh, of this trader on 9-11 who, who kind of had a glimpse of what was going on before anyone else. Um, so I work, I've been working for a number of years with Guillaume Fournier, a writer from Quebec, and we, we immediately thought, okay, that is a great story. Let's, uh, let's do something about it. Uh, and that's how the film was born. Yeah. So you mentioned the guardian. Yes. I, I have to ask, is the person you mentioned, just mentioned, um, okay. the person no. who he calls? Um, you mean the guardian? Yeah. Or the newspaper. Um, 
Uh, so I'm not sure if I understand the question right. The Guardian is is a uh, is a newspaper. It's one of the big newspapers in uh, in in England, and um, that person was someone that the 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 journalist like Joris Landai was talking to. So he's one of the sources, okay. and he he told his story. He told his own story, but uh, even that person, even or even though we were making a film about him and about what would happen to him. He, I never met him. I don't know his name. I don't know anything. Okay. Uh, he wanted to stay anonymous because they are quite afraid that um, that being talked about can hurt their careers. It's one of the things we found out about the banking world. It's quite secretive. Yeah, sure. Um, and speaking of the banking world, so we've had kind of a, I, I don't know if this has happened over um, in, in the European Union, but we had that whole, I don't know if you call it scandal or what, um, with GameStop and AMC. Yes, uh, absolutely. I forget what, what you'd even refer to it as. Um, yeah. But we kind of are seeing a, a not repeat of the 2008 crisis because mm -hmm. that was a lot bigger. Um, yeah. And, um, but I, what is your take on that? You know, having directed a short film that's kind of in yeah. its own way talking about a financial crisis. Yeah, I think that the GameStop story is extremely fascinating, but for different reasons. Actually, it's sort of the anti, uh, it's the anti free fall in a way that in uh, in free fall we show really powerful and rich hedge funds kind of uh, playing with us, playing with the world. Uh, and in GameStop, it's really like 20 years later, the internet has come and suddenly it brings some kind of power to, to the people and those people kind of got organized and got all together and they managed to shake, shake out really big hedge funds. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad, I, I really don't have, because I think I'm not very happy with both sides of the story or how it happened, but one thing for sure, it's uh, it's the first time ever I hear a story of just random people on the internet managing to uh, managing to to bankrupt uh, such a big hedge fund, and I think this is more like a new chapter opening up, like the internet, uh, the finance of the internet. So, yeah, I, I think it's quite interesting. It's almost worth a film in itself. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I, I I'm sure you've gotten that question a little too often recently. I, I just kind of wanted to ask, just just because I'm curious. You know, you you probably sp spent years on the film. Uh, yes. I, because I think what people don't realize is it's not just a oh I'm just going to drag these video I'm going to go to a a a lot. On, for one day and then go, go to my computer, edit it, and it's out the next day. Um, no, it's it's a three, four year process sometimes. Yes. Um, and you learn a lot about just certain intricacies that you don't um, think of if you're just yes. sitting in the movie theater or sitting at home in this in um, recent cases. Um, so. Yeah, I just that's the reason why. Um, but so I really appreciate. Give your congrats to the cinematographer, um, because there's a shot, um, well, actually a scene rather, where everyone's just hurrying and just like that. It's just. Everyone's calm for one second, and then it's just like, okay, now we've got a race to sell all this stuff. And I think it did a very good job about what I would imagine, uh, someone who knows nothing about stocks other than I have it, an app on my iPhone that has stocks and has numbers to it that I don't understand. Um, but I, um, give uh, the cinematographer my thanks um, on that. What was the method, I guess, you, you chose? Like, what, what kind of research would you do 
on yeah. that because as you said it's a very secretive world i mean mm. you re, um, watch the documentary lost leonardo um from sony pictures classics that came out august um or something like that and it's just very very secretive so what, what was your um what kind of research did you have to do on this? Well, actually a lot. I mean, really a lot. Uh, it's, um, it's easy to make a film that is kind of not really true, not really truthful. So then you kind of use what you have in mind and what you think it should be. And then, uh, then maybe a lot of people can, can write this. But in this case, we wanted it to be really realistic, really true. Uh, so the kind of research you do, it starts with, I guess, starts with books. Uh, so this book by Joris Lerendijk was already extremely dense, lots of information there. And we could learn a little bit how it works. Like, uh, for example, there is a scene uh, in the beginning where the boss really scares them. You have to be really, you have to make money today. You have to make money today. Uh, it sounds almost cliche, but it's how it is. It's almost like a military training. Uh, for a lot of these people, or at least it was at the time. Uh, and then, yeah, you you talk, you talk to traders, you talk to finance people. Uh, we we conducted numerous amounts of interviews. Uh, met with, uh, yeah, sat down with uh, with the bankers in Amsterdam, with a banker in France. Uh, so you just make sure that you get help by uh, by the people who know exactly how it is, and you show them what you have, you can even show them the script and they can comment on it. Um, so slowly, slowly, slowly like this, you build, uh, you build realistic things. And of course, uh, today, it's what, so if we mentioned earlier, the internet, you find as much information as you want. So documentaries, books, talking to people, uh, eventually you get something that, that feels realistic. And one of the things we're happy about uh, is that traders who watch the film now they, they say, yeah, it's, it's actually true. It's actually how it works. And this, this was a relief because, you know, you're always afraid to, to sort of make something that, that, is not, uh, that is not good enough. Yeah, of course, because it's, it's funny in a similar vein, it's, it's like I'll write a review that I think is terrible and then it does well. I'm like, what is that? Yes. <laughs> Uh, it's an interesting concept, um, but so I want to get a little spoilery just for a sure. tad. Um, that voicemail at the end. Um, wow, for one, um, it just completely turns the tone from this celebratory moment. Um, haunting as it is um, to this, oh, right, this is something I'm going to remember forever, but not for the reasons I think. Yeah. Um, and I guess I did have a question about that. And, um, and, it, and, it, um, and if the information is not available, um, that's fine. So just to clarify, was, um, I believe it was Freddie. Um, yes. Were, were Freddie and I forget the main guy's name. I apologize. Um, Tom. What, what was their relationship like? Yeah. Were they just um, buddies or? So I would say that um, they are. They have a sort of mentor relationship. So uh, Freddie is a senior. The senior trader at the firm. Tom is a young trader. Uh, we don't need to give all the background. I mean, we don't even know ourselves, but we imagine that uh, we imagine that it got um, hired maybe by Freddie, or Freddie told Mark, maybe you should hire this boy. He can do something. So it's it's a sort of uh, mentorship uh, thing. Uh, maybe it's something we haven't done perfectly in the film because some people question also the type of relationship they have uh but yeah the idea was that it's, it's mentorship and a friendship uh, relationship yeah okay i just want to ask because i was wondering um usually i don't ask because i like my english teacher um from high school 
said stories are she said something about stories being a window into a particular moment in time yes yes and that you're just looking in you're not meant to know um what happened when they when that person walked through the door and when yes. they what they had for dinner it's not Correct. about that it's about that no, it's one about moment that. yes um, yeah, that's why that's why I would say it's free for anyone to interpret however they want it. I mean, we show something and then you can you can read it differently according to yeah to your what you how your bang run and how you want it to to be. So that that's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah, um, and that brings up another thing is um, so um, I apologize. I I forget the main character's name. No problem. Um, it's Tom. I, I, it's it's what? Tom. He's called Tom. Tom. I, I watched a lot of movies last night, so it's kind of blurring together. Um, no um So Tom, um, he he goes on this investigative kick. Um, so where? Again, I hate to ask intent, but where do you think that comes from? Uh, with Tom is it just because of his trader background and he's trying to find patterns and trends? Um, do you mean the tr do you mean the, the the investigation he carries out to understand what, what was going on? Yeah, um, I think it's um, I think it's the paradox that you know at the time at the time everybody who was there remembers what what he was doing. You know, like when it happened, like. Everybody stopped working. Absolutely, everybody stopped working. Yeah. Everybody went to watch television, and there was nothing going on. But in his case, he's he's a trader, so I think he has an intuition. He feels there is something going on, and then whether we endorse that or not, because we can ask the more question: Did he do right? But he's the only one who kind of senses that he his job is affected by this. His actions are affected by this. So he he has and he should do something about it. Um, so I think he needs to get the information because if he's right, he's going to make a lot of money. He's, if he's wrong, he's going to bankrupt the fund, basically. So I think he needs to, he needs to get information. Uh, one of the things that, are, that is really important is that training is about information. So for example, you have those, um, you, have, you have a lot of scandals in Wall Street. You hear about insider trading, uh, a lot of people cheat, a lot of people try to use information they should not have, a lot of people bribe people to have information, because honestly, trading is a lot about information. If you know in advance that this person will join the board or this CEO will be fired or the result of this company are not good, well, you have the information before anyone else, you will take positions in stock market and make money accordingly. So I, I think that's why he's really after the information what is going on here uh, and then again the moral question is inevitable like is he doing what he should be doing or should he should he be shouldn't be he thinking about the people who are suffering but that's exactly what we show about the, the finance world right it's it's what they do yeah and kind of going off that it, the um, momentum that he uses in this time of tragedy uh, there's no other word um, yes. I think what the short film did well is um, really put you in the space of, hey, you can be like, you can be in this guy's mind space because everyone has gone into their boss's office and said, hey, I think I'm right about this. And mm -hmm. if we don't do this, we lose a lot of money. I've done it. Um, like at my old movie theater job, I was like, no, we got to keep the coffee machine because that's what everyone buys at hot food. Yes. Like, but they got rid of it. Uh, at, um, like if you go to an AMC or I guess it would be, um, oh, what would it be? Oh, in the UK, it'd be, I think it'd be Cineworld. I think AMC owns Cineworld or something like that. Um, you can't buy coffee, but anyways. How did you approach that moment, or did that just come out of your own experience? 
Uh, no, I think it comes, it comes from that. That's really what we try to do because uh, what what he's doing, right? We we don't like it. Like the morality of it is really shocking. However, we wanted to show in a not judgmental way how it is to be doing this job. So we have to put the audience into into the head of of this trader and and we and we make him feel which wanted him to feel uh, yeah what it is to be doing this job i mean you're, you're gambling you're gambling big information um so there is a sort of ambivalence i'm not sure if that's the right english word sorry uh, like no, you, that's right okay that's good <laughs> so as an audience we're, we're kind of a little bit in between we we kind of see someone who is trying to do his job well and at the same time we are we are wondering like what the hell is he doing like this is this is not correct right but uh, but if you show it in non non-judgmental way like you can feel okay this is what he's doing and you can feel a bit of the thrill and you can feel and maybe you can understand better how it works and you can understand better why those decisions are taking this way and why the world is running the way it is. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I answer your question. No, you did. And you kind of actually, in, in um, a roundabout way, answered my follow-up question um, because we do start up this short film thinking, okay, this is a guy who is down and out on his luck. He can't even get to work on time. He, he, yes. he doesn't do this right. He's going to lose his job. And then it just flips in the middle of the short film, and it's just like, oh, I, I've been rooting for a monster. And then, oh, wait, yes. but he's also human, too. It's a very interesting um, balance, one that I, I think not even two-hour movies get right. Um, like, I was watching No Time to Die, and I'm like, okay, there, it, there was little bit you could have tweaked there to talk more about the human experience and uh and how that affects a spy um like with the m stuff i won't go into spoilers but um <laughs> but yeah I, I just it's an amazing script um because it i think the best quote unquote villains uh i wouldn't call this guy a villain i I just think he took advantage of an opportunity he saw. We, I do it all the time, and then I'm like, oh, crap. I, I did the wrong thing here. But um, I think that's what made the short film so relatable because we, we've had a few 9-11 documentaries come out this year, um, some from the same streamer platform. Um, but... And I think there might be some aversion to that, but I think when you come at it like, okay, no, this isn't just trying to relive these hor horrific events. It's trying to put your mind in the brain of a human who is working that day. Um, yes. And you said something about uh, everyone knows where we went, where we were um, at, during 9-11. And literally, that is my opening for the review. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna uh, keep that. Um, but, anyways, um, yeah, I, I just want to. Um, it's it's such a great short film. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll. I have a review coming today uh, of it. Um, and, yeah, I. It's. I believe, let me see. I think it's showing at a few festivals. Yes. Um, right. Can't remember off the top of my head, but I know it's for sure showing at the, let me see if I can get this right, the San Jose International Short Film Festival. Yes. We've had a few already, and we have now, uh, we have San Jose, we have Santa Fe as well in the U.S. coming, a small festival called Lake County, and maybe next year we have more. Uh, or maybe in December, we don't know. But you know how you know how the process is. You submit to festivals, and then you get answers all along the year. So you you don't know what's coming in six months, but you don't know what's coming next month. Oh, and I almost forgot to say, twenty twenty two Oscar eligible. Um, yes. 
I, I completely blinked on that. So, so hold on. How does that feel? I mean, that's like one of the highest awards. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because, you know, the way to, the way to be eligible is to, win, uh, is to win one of the big festivals in the world. So uh, honestly, uh, we, we, we never thought it would happen. We never thought we would get an award like this, but we, we got one almost at the first festival. So the, the, the international premiere was in Regard in Quebec. And, and then we learned that we, we had won the grand prize. And then suddenly like, wow, you don't know because you know, there are five to 5,000 to 10,000 short films made every year. It's very, very hard to think of yourself existing in this, in this like uh, festivals receive 5,000 films. Um, like to be selected is already a huge victory and then to get to get the prizes it's crazy so i think the first the first few days we just couldn't even believe it you know like wow is it even possible this is happening to us yeah uh, so yeah yeah it's, it's a great film yeah I, I i couldn't even imagine um but yeah that's got to be huge um and i i just remembered it was also at holly shorts um, yes. Just a few days ago, um, which is it was last week or two weeks ago at Holly Shorts. Yeah. Yeah, um, and that's one of I, if I remember from last year, that's one of a pretty big festival. Um, in fact, I um, covered a few shorts out of there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I just can't even fathom the whole Oscar eligible thing, like. That's nuts. And it's also nuts, you know, just to rant a little bit. Um, it's October, and then I it, it, coverage for award season lasts till like February. I just think that's an interesting thing um, yes. because it's like I'm putting out um, eligible film lists, nominations ballots. Um, and all that, and I'm like, wait, it's October. What am I doing? But I, yeah, yeah we're only three months away. Um, and in those three months, I, I really hope um, this short film gets distributed to um, a platform where people will see it on. I, I forget the main one. Maybe it's not Acorn TV. Um, there's a big one. Maybe Topic Studios or something like I'm, that. I'm I'm not exactly sure because being European, I I don't know which one it is in the U.S. All the distribution channels are different when you go to a different country. Yeah, whichever one does the yearly Oscar qualifying shorts ones. That's the one I'm talking about. I'll I'll have that somewhere. Um, but Manuel, it was so nice talking to you. I. It's great. Thank you so much. It, 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 it's always great to talk to a filmmaker, you know, big or, or, or of any size, really, because I love talking about the craft, um, especially when it is so focused, so singular um, as this. Um, and like I said, I will have a review um, up in the next couple of days. Uh, actually, no, right. today. <laughs> My, my brain's foggy, it, 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 it's full of things. But for those watching and listening, thank you so much for joining me and Emmanuel on this. Um, I, you can catch Freefall pretty much at, I don't wanna say every festival, but I'll have the, the festivals it's at with links to the Freefall short film page in the description of the YouTube uh, and podcast link. Um, you just have to scroll down a little bit. Um, but yeah, thank you so much again, Emmanuel. It was thank you. a pleasure thank you talking. A pleasure, likewise. Mm -hmm.